Since ancient times, people have worn shoes to protect their feet, and more recently, a kind of fashion statement. The oldest kind of footwear were manufactured from natural materials like twine, bark, and other fibers. Over 5,000 years ago, a single piece of cowhide was used to create the first pair of leather shoes, which were then secured with a leather string. Although there are still many shoes made of leather today, there are also a wide range of alternative materials available, and shoemaking techniques have evolved over time. Most leather shoes were created without distinction for the left and right foot until about 1800. Despite being utilized by the Romans, distinction of the right or left foot was not widely used in the production of shoes until the Industrial Revolution. Midway through the 18th century, shoemaking began to become more mechanized. Although the majority of the job was still done by hand, the automation of shoemaking advanced with the invention of the sewing machine in 1846. Other advancements from the middle to the end of the 18th century contributed to the factorization of shoemaking. A shoemaking device created by Jan Erst Matzeliger boosted production speed by 900%. Jan Matzeliger invented, patented, constructed working prototypes of a factory tested device known as a shoe lasting machine. He later acquired shares of the business that produced it. 150 to 700 pairs of shoes might be produced every day by Matzeliger's shoe lasting equipment. This is the story of Jan Erst Matzeliger. Sit back, relax, let's get into it. On September 15, 1852, Jan Ertz Matzeliger was born in Paramaribo, Dutch Guiana, now the Republic of Suriname, on the northern coast of South America. He was the son of a Dutch engineer who had been sent to the island colony to run the government machine works. He was well educated and came from a wealthy and aristocratic Dutch family. His mother, who was a black slave from Suriname, was a house slave, and she resided on the plantation that his father owned. Jan Matzliger, who had a mechanical talent at a young age, started working in machine shops under his father's supervision when he was just 10 years old. He left Suriname at the age of 19 to travel the world as a seaman aboard an East Indian commercial ship. He assisted in maintaining the steamship's engines. He spent two years at sea traveling to the Far East before sailing to North America. Jan Matzleger quit the Dutch East Indies Company when the ship landed in Philadelphia in 1873 and started looking for a job as a machinist. He held a variety of jobs, including an apprenticeship as a shoemaker before relocating to Boston in 1876. The next year, he relocated to Lynn, Massachusetts, an industrial hub located 10 miles northeast of Boston on the north side of the Massachusetts Bay. As a shoe stitching machine operator, he was hired by the Harney Brothers Shoe Factory in Lynn, Massachusetts. Life was difficult. In addition to his race, he was alienated by his native Dutch language. The only church to accept him despite his race was the Congregational Church, where he joined and resided above the West Lynn Mission. He led a solitary life while reading and studying. He was quiet and extremely brilliant. Jan learned the cord weaning trade, which involved crafting shoes almost entirely by hand. Cord waners made molds of customers' feet called lasts with wood or stone. After that, the shoes were measured and molded using the molds. The job of hand lasters was the final and most difficult stage of making a shoe. 
The body of the shoe is shaped and joined to its sole entirely by hand. This phase of assembly was regarded as being the most challenging and time consuming. The actual assembly of the soles to the upper shoe presented the biggest challenge in shoemaking. Therefore, it took significant expertise to tack and sew the two parts together. It was believed that only human hands with training could perform such precise work. Since this stage had not yet been automated, shoe lasters had considerable influence over the shoe business. They would organize work stoppages without consideration for the preferences of their co-workers, leaving them unemployed for extended periods of time. During the day, Metzliger watched the hand lasters at the shoe factory. He attempted to imitate the motions of the lasters at night using manufacturing scraps. Metzliger created sketches secretly. He spent six months building a rudimentary machine for testing purposes, composed of wire, wood, and cigar boxes. Even before it was fully developed, Jan Matzliger's employer made an offer of $50 for the device. Jan turned down the proposal. He then tried building a long-lasting machine out of the scrap iron, a four-year endeavor. A $1,500 offer was made to Max Liger for his iron laster. Once more, he declined the offer and carried on perfecting his machine in a spare room of the factory where he worked. He sacrificed sleep and only spent five or six cents a day on meals in order to save money for his experiment. Max Liger worked on creating his lasting machine for 10 years with minimum support. In fact, when the public learned about his secret effort, they made fun of him, but Max Liger wasn't deterred. Charles H. Dell Now and Melville S. Nichols agreed to invest money in Jan Max Liger's innovation in exchange for two-thirds ownership of the product. Match Liga submitted an application for a patent. The earliest machine designs that Match Liga delivered to the patent office in Washington, D.C. were so difficult for the staff to understand, a patent office official visited Lynn, Massachusetts to physically inspect the device in order to understand how it operated. The lasting machine, which could adjust the shoe, drive in the nails, and create a completed result in under a minute was patented by Match Liga on March 20th, 1883. Match Liga persisted in refining his creation until it was ready for the first production test. On May 29th, 1885, the device was used for the first time in front of the general public and broke a record by lasting 75 pairs of shoes. From the 50 pairs of shoes an experienced laster could create by hand in a day, Match Liga developed his device until he could make 700 pairs of shoes every day. Thanks to a roughly 50% decrease in shoe prices because of the new device, many more individuals could now purchase high quality shoes. The lasting machine created by Match Liga was an instant hit. The Consolidated Lasting Machine Company was established in 1889 to produce the devices, and Match Liger received a sizable portion of the company's shares. Sadly, Jan Match Liger compromised his health by working long hours on his invention and going extended times without eating. He caught a cold that swiftly progressed to tuberculosis. He never got to enjoy the full benefits of his invention because of his early death from the illness. On August 24, 1889, he passed away, three weeks before turning 37 in Lynn, Massachusetts. But until recently, he was not acknowledged in history books due to the color of his skin. In fact, Jan Matzlinger 
was known as the Dutch N-word and his device as the N-word headlaster by his contemporaries. Jan Matzliger gave the North Congressional Church a sizable chunk of his wealth. When the North Church faced financial difficulties years later, it was discovered that the stock left by Matzliger had grown in value significantly. Through the sale of the stock, the church was able to pay off its debt. He was the feature of a 1991 Black Heritage Collection stamp released by the U.S. Postal Service. In Lynn, Massachusetts, he was given a statue. And the North Congressional Church has a life-size painting of Jan Matzliger hanging on its walls. That's it for this episode of Aggressive Intelligence. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.